This presentation will evaluate Paul McCarthy's Painter, which satirises the heroic male abstract expressionist artist as an arrogant and buffoonish narcissist. Born in Salt Lake City, Utah in 1945, McCarthy is a sculptor and performance artist best known for his series of self-consciously perverse performances that explore psychoanalytic themes. In his most notable works, he has taken on the leading roles of Chef, Santa Claus and the one that I'll be discussing today, an abstract expressionist painter. In the 50-minute performance, we see a visceral portrayal of an artist facing an internal struggle to create good art and lay bare his soul. However, McCarthy mocks the seriousness of this process by making the artist appear more like a spiralling clown than a creative genius. Try... I listen, I don't, I listen to what I have to say. Don't pay much attention. Dressed in a painter's smock and wearing a platinum blonde wig, McCarthy represents a caricature of the artist Willem de Kooning, with a bulbous prosthetic nose, huge rubber hands and protruding ears. Surrounded by massive canvases and six-foot-tall tubes of paint labelled red, blue, flesh and shit, McCarthy's character staggers from studio to bedroom to dealer's office with a manic energy and violently compulsive actions. In one scene, McCarthy throws a tantrum, breaking everything in an art dealer's office, screaming, where is my money, and acting like a fractious child. How much money do you owe me now? Why haven't you paid me the money you owe me? Because oh, I have no. a lot of money that I was supposed to get paid, and I never got paid any of that kind of money. McCarthy's painter plays the idiot who is caught between being an incompetent misfit lacking the appropriate networking skills to achieve recognition and success and the idealist refusing the compromise of institutionalism. In an interview at the start of 1995, McCarthy discussed the initial thought process behind Painter and how it evaluates more than just the artist. When I was first asked what I was going to do at the show at MoMA, I said I was going to make a documentary about a painter. It came out as a spontaneous reaction. It seemed appropriate. There has always been a reference to painting in my work anyway. When the interviewer asked if it's more about the painter rather than painting, McCarthy responded, I don't know yet. It involves a number of references to painting, cliches about what art is and how the art world works, notions of collectors, money and art. People I've talked to about it refer to it as the painter, but I don't think that's what it's all about. McCarthy uses parody as a way of critiquing and desublimating Western culture, specifically the art world. In his approach to action painting, McCarthy transforms the drip technique to smearing materials on the canvas, the walls, and then later himself. McCarthy intends to uncover the real world behind the glamour of the art market, unmasking the icons of the industry such as artists, collectors and dealers as egocentric morons and sycophantic brown noses. And uh, what sort of art have you been collecting? Some Rothko's. We met Gerhard uh, also, personally. At the end of Painter, McCarthy as the artist takes off his underpants, bends over and has his bum sniffed by a collector, making it explicitly clear that the art that torments the artist and infatuated the collector is in fact shit. So who is the painter supposed to be? McCarthy said that painting in a kind of character allows himself to be removed from the restrictions that he puts on himself. Like, within normality I have restrictions, and they're culturally conditioned, and they're there. If I break from that, then it allows me to have freedom. When McCarthy puts on a costume or a mask, he doesn't necessarily become an actor playing a role, but rather his compulsive activity, manic energy, and infantile pleasure and disgust is shared with the audience through a kind of bodily contagion that comes from the fact that the artist remains himself and that this self seems out of control. That being said, there are definitely influences on McCarthy's character. For instance, Jenny Klein states, In performances such as Painter, McCarthy undermines the role of potent male creator through his buffoon-like behaviour and clownish masks. She continues, McCarthy not only wears a mask on his head, but also on his hands, the locus for artistic creation. Klein makes the connection, in a move reminiscent to Van Gogh's amputation of his ear, the tussle-haired painter cuts off his own finger. Okay. Connections have also been made with McCarthy representing Willem de Kooning, or perhaps an abstract expressionist who idolises him. The character frequently repeats the words de Kooning, de Kooning as some kind of mantra whilst creating his art. Going through a stage, all the artists that get famous seem to go through this ridiculous stage. No, 
And you just have to get over it. You're just a human being. Art historian Annalena Werner states that by connecting aspects of popular culture to psychoanalytical issues, McCarthy embodies psychic trauma-related topics such as isolation, obsessive-compulsive disorder, repression or regression through figures that are Shell's spoiled cast-off clichés of media heroes. In Painter, he seems to suffer from a post-traumatic stress disorder which limits his behavioural patterns and regresses him back into infancy. Critic Thomas McEverly suggested that McCarthy's work shows a defence mechanism abandoning reality and personal trauma, which is shown in a daffy, clumsy, whining or defiant behaviour. To put this work into context, McCarthy's earlier work from the 1970s put a lot of emphasis on concrete performance, which demanded for being as concrete as reality. For example, in his work Class Fall, taking place in a classroom at the University of California, McCarthy was preoccupied with transgressive bodily actions. McCarthy threw his ketchup-smeared body around the classroom and at one point inserted a Barbie doll up his rectum. Such gestures by McCarthy were intended to degrade and devalue conventional figures of authority. In the same period as Class Fall, Chris Burden's shoot in 1971 happened, in which he actually got shot, However, McCarthy pivoted from this notion, stating, That definition of performance as reality, as concrete, became less interesting to me. I became more interested in mimicking, appropriation, fiction, representation and questioning meaning, which is evident in his later work in the 90s, such as Painter. McCarthy's work embraces the overabundant material signs of consumer culture. Schedule. All the money I wanted, I wanted to get paid right now. All of it, I want it all right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. His work is historically significant as he exploits genres like sculpture, film, photography and performance to invent a new genre of art, a concoction of mass media and cultural fantasia that is both universally recognised and intimately personal. Unlike his contemporaries Chris Burden and Vito Acconci, who received their recognition during the 1970s, McCarthy had to wait until the 90s for his work to be fully appreciated. This could potentially add a personal element in his critique of the American art world in Painter, as McCarthy didn't sell a single piece of work to an American until only after the embrace of abject art that occurred in the 90s. For over 40 years, Paul McCarthy's work has occupied a significant place in contemporary visual art, continually challenging audiences to confront the psychological undercurrents of consumer culture. His work is grotesque and animalistic, yet is always meticulously conceived and executed, because of which many of his notable works, like Painter, have made McCarthy become a staple in postmodern visual art. McCarthy's work critiques the sanitised image of the American art world by having his childish character contaminate the initially clean and usually minimalist space by splattering and smearing red, brown and black liquids all over everything taking a postmodern approach to criticising the high-minded seriousness and claims for authenticity of late modernist painting. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I thought you'd oh. like that. <laughs> yes.